Welcome to Needed Conversations, everybody. This is Ryan and Victoria Cole. You're in the middle of season two of our podcast, and we're so excited that you've joined us. In our first episode, we talked about um, what's going on in our life and how to manage transitions well and um, how to stay healthy in the midst of some challenging transitions in life. Um, and now we're, we're moving into a conversation on purpose. I think that this is a really important conversation for, for, for people to have because it answers the question that everybody asks, why am I here? Mm-hmm. Why was I put here on earth? Um, and what am I supposed to do about it? And it's especially at the beginning of the year, but also just to really at any point in our society today, there's a lot of pressure put on us to perform, to achieve, to um, attain success. But what really is success? And what does it really mean to know your purpose and walk in it? Um, so that's what we're going to be breaking down a little bit today. And I'm excited too, because I have a course that I'm releasing in the next couple of weeks on purpose, and you're going to want to be a part of it. I'm really going to take this concept and break it down into bite-sized pieces so you can understand, um, you know, whether or not you're walking in the will of God and, and how to really live a fulfilled life. Um, one that is, you know, used to glorify God. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's what it's really about. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 19, 21, that many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. So even in the midst of your planning and doing and achieving and, you know, storing up your accolades, um, are you really fulfilling the purpose that God has for you? Or are you chasing a prize that he never intended you to chase? I'm going to be uh, releasing this course. It's a mini course. It's not going to be a long, but it's going to be intensive. You want to be a part of it. So um, go to RyanColeEmpowerment.com and sign up right now. Pre-sign up uh, and and be the first to get, get in on this course. It's going to be exciting. Victoria, how you been? Been good. Um, you know, that's an amazing thing to uh, really discover about yourself is truly your purpose, because I think we can walk aimlessly in life and uh, feel like we're hopping from one thing to another. And I think that's uh, uh, one thing that I feel like a lot of our young people are struggling with. You know, when you first go into college and you step in, a lot of times you think, oh, I think I'm going to go towards this path. And then they start studying towards it. And they're like, wow, I don't think this is something that I'm passionate about. Um, like I personally stumbled upon that because I'm a doer. So like I like to have hands on experience. So even when I stepped into college and I was like, I think I want to be a nurse. And part of the reason the I kind of stepped into that was because, you know, people were like, oh, it's good money, you know, right. that's that. so I was like, OK, I'll start, you know, working towards that. And I was like, you know what? I need some hands on experience. So I actually got my certification and started working at the hospital. And I was like. Yeah, this is not for me. And I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm so glad I didn't waste four years of my life to uh, figure out later on that this is not something that I'm passionate about. Um, At the end of the day, I think uh, purpose to me means fulfillment, you know, and I think that we uh, in our day and age, uh, our definition of, I guess, purpose is is different because a lot of times we equate it to success and success, meaning that we reach a specific status or we attain uh, financial freedom in some way or we earn that much money or we have this much influence talking about like social media or, you know. But that's not truly the impact that we're talking about because, uh, you know, the purpose that God instills in you to fulfill leaves an imprint and legacy. I'm even thinking about my dad, you know, just, uh, you know, he he lived like a simple life, Mm -hmm. but just really listening and uh, hearing the voice of God to even have the... um, the faith to pick up his whole family and move to United States, you know, cause he felt like that that was going to be a better opportunity for his kids. I mean, that's, that's a big step. Um, and I, I know that he wasn't just doing it because he felt like it. Mm-hmm. I, I know that he was, you know, praying and believing that that's what God has called him to do. And that mindset, um, has crept into 
the church as well. And we've put it inside of our sermons and, you know, the goal is houses and cars and to be a millionaire. And, you know, I have my thoughts about that, um, which we definitely can dig into. Um, but prosperity isn't necessarily about dollar bills in your bank account. We all definitely want to have some type of, you know, financial freedom. And and those are good goals. But at the end of the day, if that's not attached to a bigger why, you know, then you're never going to experience fulfillment. And uh, for me, my goal isn't success, but significance. Mm. That when I leave the world, you know, I don't just leave money or I don't leave, you know, because I'm not taking those things with me anyways, but um, more so I'm leaving impact, impact on people that I poured into, that I mentored, that I loved. Uh, first and foremost, my wife and my children, but extending outward to the community. Who did I pour my life into? And those exchanges that you make that you can't place a dollar value on, um, that's really what I, I, I'm striving for, you know? And and so when you talk about success, success is basically the achievement of a certain goal or a metric. But so oftentimes those goals and metrics aren't determined by us, but they're determined by society as a whole. That mm. if you reach this status um, in your business or you have this amount of money or this amount of clients or this amount of social media followers, then you've reached a place of quote unquote success. But the fact is um, those determinants are constantly changing. And for so many people, it feels like the finish line keeps moving. And in a lot of ways in our society, it's true. And um, we play this cat and mouse game. We're in a rat race. And uh, God doesn't want us to live like that. God just doesn't want us to be bound by this societal pressure to perform. He has a specific purpose for us. And regardless of the plans that we make, it's his purpose that will prevail. We will continue to be unsatisfied. And that feeling, uh, that lack of satisfaction is a gift mm. in disguise. It's a gift that God gives you as an indicator that you are, are are focused on the wrong thing. Your the prize that you put it in front of you um, is completely different than that which He wants you to pursue. And so, what I've determined uh, through Scripture, studying the life of men and women of God in the Bible, um, and even through history, is purpose is connected to a series of things. To know your purpose is an abstract thing. You don't just wake up one day and say, I know my purpose. My purpose is a complete sentence that I can put together in a mission statement about my life. All of mm-hmm. those things are great. And they help you in a lot of ways to, to do good in the world, right? But when it comes down to it, purpose isn't some aha <laughs> moment that you have, but it's this unfolding and unwrapping of the gift that God has created you to be to the world. And who is that gift going to be given to? So I really have brought purpose down to this simple equation. You know, purpose is connected to um, a a passion that you're called to pursue, um, a problem that you're called to solve, a people that you're called to serve, a place that you're called to do it in, and recognizing that none of it is possible without the presence of God saturating your life. Mm -hmm. So all of those P words is what I'm building my course around to help people understand and really tracking with people in the Bible to say, oh, this is the point where they recognized, oh, this is the people that God has called me to serve. This is, this is something that bubbles up inside of me when I get around this disenfranchised group of people or this hurting community or this demographic of people, this, this, this compassion comes out of me. Oh, this is the problem that I'm called to solve. Oh, this is the place that I'm called to do it. And all, all of this aligns. And then you can say, you know, I'm moving in, in my purpose from assignment to assignment. And God will lay an assignment before you and it will align with all of these things. This particular group of people you're called to serve, this particular problem that he's calling you to solve. And um, 
and having his presence with you every step of the way, which is going to be the stamp, the confirmation, the approval that you need to to fulfill it and to to pursue it with with all of your endurance and all of your strength. And I know that's a lot wrapped up Mm -hmm. in that statement Mm -hmm. there, but I'm going to be unfolding it in this course that you want to be a part of. So make sure you sign up. But when it comes to purpose, what are some of those misconceptions that you've had to overcome, even Victoria? I know you talked about what you did something that a lot of people don't do is when you hit those late teens, early 20s, really opening yourself up to discovery, not like, um, what do they call it? Um, Sowing your wild oats, not that, not going into a lifestyle of sin and testing out those waters, but allowing yourself space to discover. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you did, obviously, was say, let me test because I'm a little unsure. Let me test the waters first and Mm -hmm. see what, what comes back to me, whether or not this speaks to me or not. For me, I knew I had a passion for education and knowledge. But I felt so compelled not to go to college straight out of high school. And it was one of the best decisions I made. I took three or four years and was on a path of discovery that really accelerated my progress. And when I actually went to school and got my you degree. You took it seriously. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I studied that which I knew this was, was going to benefit. Because you're passionate about. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, so many young people I talked to. They are in their third year of college and they still haven't picked a major. Like Mm. they don't know. And we can have a whole conversation about how the educational system is shifting and higher learning is shifting, which is to our benefit, these micro uh, uh, credentials. But talk, talk to me about your, your experience, you know, growing up and what, what, at what point did you say, this is what I want to do with my life? Well, I personally, like, I I always waited out, you know, my decisions because I understood early on in life, and this is not to toot my own horn, that's just my personality and my upbringing and me having to grow up a lot quicker because I'm one of 12. And I had to pick up, I had to be responsible for my own self early on in life. And so I understood, I think, early on in life that every decision that I make affects my future. And so I was just trying to be more like self-aware of, okay, if I, you know, step into uh, doing higher education, let's say, and now, you know, if I'm taking out all this money and then if I don't really tap into it and figure out if this is something that I really like, then now I have this loan on my head, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not even 20 yet because I went to college like at 17. And so I was like, I would rather, you know, have, a couple of thousand dollars that I spent and pay it off and have the experience. And that also, you know, helps to kind of shape and mold you because you're around people. So you get to kind of see what you're passionate about. And one thing that I discovered early on, and I think that's something that was passed down from my mom is, you know, uh, is being a servant, a servant leader uh, is, you know, serving other people. I love, you know, hospitality. I love being at home. I'm a homebody. So just kind of figuring out little things about my personal passions and how I can contribute to the world with those passions. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, stepping in from a young adult, knowing that that's something that's been passed down to me, and then stepping into like even working as a CNA, as a certified nurse's assistant at the hospital, I loved people. I loved taking care of them and it what, was it was um it was a quote unquote easy decision for you to choose nursing yeah. because one of the first things that I noticed about you when spending any kind of significant time with you was that you were a servant like the way that you would serve your family the way that you would make sure the environment of your home was a certain way and you wanted when people stepped into your home to that they walked away feeling better about themselves, I could see how nursing would be an easy path for you. But it also frustrated me because there was things that I couldn't help. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
I think it frustrated me that I was not in control of that. Like I wanted to overextend myself so much to try to do everything in my power to help these people, but it wasn't enough. And at the end of the day, I think within a year, like I was young and my back was hurting, you know, because from running around 12 hour shifts, it was a lot. It was a lot. And there was a lot of frustration there. Um, and so I stepped out and started working in different fields, you know, and that helped me kind of to discover like what I truly like to do. And I think whenever, you know, we got married, I don't fully feel like you know the pathway to take, you know what I mean? But every season of your life, wherever you're planted, whatever job you're on, I think that you can just learn to be self-aware of what you like, what you don't like, yep. what you feel you like your weaknesses are. And you can glean from those are, experiences. What right. your weaknesses are, what your strengths are, mm -hmm. and how you can carry that on, uh, even if you're stepping out of that workplace or you feel like God is calling you to open up a business or, you know, to minister to people um, or whatever it is that God has placed on your heart, that you take those things that you learn and you become better. I mean, that's what life is all about. You know, you, you, um, you, create experiences because we're not promised tomorrow, you know? So what can you do to really live your best life today, wherever you are? And even if you hate a job that you're at, um, you can view it as um, an opportunity to gain wisdom. What can I learn from this experience? Even if you're dealing with difficult people, difficult managers or bosses, mm -hmm. how can I take that and let that sharpen my relational skills and carry that into, you know, what what I want to do with the rest of my life. And even looking at you, and I love to have conversations with people about purpose because I feel like I have a knack to help um, sort of unravel the thread that people are, are tugging on. But they, they, it's almost like, you know, if you've ever had your shoes in a knot on, on your pants or your tennis shoes or whatever, <clears throat> and you try to get that knot out, it can be it can be hard, and, and sometimes you need help, or you know, it's it's just pulling on that one thread until it unravels a bit, and that's really what that season of discover, discovery helps you to do is just tug on those threads, and you're really identifying your gifts. You're saying this is what's already in my arsenal. This is what God has given me. Um, uh, as a part of my personality, natural giftings. This is things are things that I I gleaned from my culture and my upbringing, and these are th the passions I want to pursue. These are the the passions uh, that I want to put my energy towards crafting out these certain skills. And you have to say to yourself, you know, what are the skills that I need to sharpen? This is a natural set of giftings that I have. How can I sharpen these skills and how can I connect these passions to certain problems that I see in the world that I could bring solution to? One of the things that I notice about you and nursing is a noble practice for sure. We, we're even more aware of that during these COVID times, how much they sacrifice. I think for you, your passion wasn't necessarily in helping the sick, but you've discovered over time that your passion was more so in helping people discover wellness mm -hmm. and, and almost yeah. preventing the sickness before it and comes. And I guess it's also from, I believe that everything... Right, as, as, especially now that I'm in my 30s, I truly believe that everything works uh, for its purpose. Uh -huh. um, and when you come with that perception, you start seeing, you know, people and situations that you went through as something that um, is molding your 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 life. Um, like uh, I love the scripture in Romans eight twenty eight. it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And so I think when you have that perception that no matter where you are in life and what season you're in, that, um, it's there to shape and mold you. So yeah. my nursing experience, you know, shaped and molded me and helped me rediscover that I'm passionate about, you know, health and wellness. And my background coming from Ukraine and the way I was fed by my parents and the way I was brought up helped to mold, you know, my perception and what I see as a problem, like even in this medical industry. And then I kind of carried it on to my other job where I had an amazing manager 
And he always tugged at me, you know, and I would always complain about, you know, problems in this job. And You all worked that. for a small business. Yeah, though. but he always said, you know, what do we always say? Problems are uh, an opportunity for um, improvement. And I hated that, but it carried with me throughout my life that yes. any time that I did see a problem, I was not going to grumble and complain about it. It's just a time for me to, you know, start improving on whatever it is and have like, it's almost like taking a higher road. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so you take those little bits and pieces and you kind of start stepping into a more defined uh, road and it's more clearer and clearer. I feel like as you take these life experiences and along the way, it's not that those things were purposeless, purposeless, you know, the people that you've met, the people that you've impacted, the people in the lives that you've touched, that's what truly matters. Mm -hmm. You know, that I can look back in my decision of being celibate before marriage, that it affected my siblings, that it affected people that I was around and working at that time. Mm -hmm. And they were always telling me like naysayers, you know, like this is never going to happen to you, you know, or happen for you. You're never going to get married. And then, you know, seeing my life transpire. And it's not that I'm here to say, well, I told you so, you know, I followed through with my decision and now look at my life now. It's it's about being, you having humility, you know, and trusting God that everything does work for a purpose. And I think the more you discover yourself, the more humble you become because yeah. you start seeing like, wow, I really need to work on this area and this area and this area. And the beautiful thing about being in the kingdom of God is that there's nothing that is wasted. Mm. When it comes to your relationship with God, he, like Romans 8, 28 says, he will cause everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. As long as your, um, your affections are set on God, as long as you are driven by his presence and motivated by his his presence and led by his Holy Spirit, God will take all of your past experiences and allow you to extract everything that you need, filling up your toolbox in preparation for um, for what he really is wanting you to do with your life. I've had many conversations with my parents and looking over my life. And as you grow older, it's easier to look, they say hindsight is twenty twenty joke, you know, it actually is now. <clears throat> technically we're, you know, 2020 is in our past, but <laughs> we really do see with clearer vision to say, I understand now why I had to have that seemingly horrible job. I understand now why I had to walk through this or why this, you know, I had to have this relationship experience or why, you know, and we have to take responsibility for bad decisions. That's for sure. But if you're being led by God, all things are going to be used to get, get, give you wisdom that you need to pull out that purpose that he has on the inside of you. And so um, that's what I'm going to be talking about in my course. We're talking about how to discover what passions that you should be pursuing in your life, because there's a lot of ungodly passions that we can cultivate in our mm -hmm. lives as well. And that'll drive us towards a negative outcomes, but really looking at passions that God puts uh, upon your heart. And that's really from being in his presence, right? Um, one of the things that uh, we, we say at the living room, Pastor Stephen says it too, you know, uh, we can be uh, motivated towards a purpose-driven life, but that means nothing without a presence-driven life. And what we really should be pursuing is God's presence. When you pursue his presence, he brings out the good passions that he places inside mm -hmm. of you. When you pursue those passions, you could pair those with problems that God can call you to solve. And you can begin to see with a prophetic mindset of, you know, even what what are the problems that we aren't even experiencing right now, but we're going to experience because of certain things that are happening right now. For me, one of the things I look at, um, especially with our calling to help people with marriage and dating and relationships, I'm constantly looking at the world of social media, technology, how, um, you know, artificial intelligence and, and computers have been integrated with every aspect of our lives. 
And people ask, are going to ask the question even more so, what does it mean to be human? And knowing that, how do I relate to other people? And so I was looking at those future problems and I'm saying, wow, purpose, purpose, purpose right there all day long. People are going to be asking that question more and more. And I'm going to be the one to open the door and provide the answers to say, you know, this is how God designed men and women to relate. This mm-hmm. is how he He desires our families to function. And so that's for me how I can connect that. And here's the good thing about it. You don't have to pursue prosperity. Mm-hmm. Prosperity is directly connected to the godly passions that you cultivate, the problems that you solve, and the people that you serve. It's directly connected. So I didn't even add prosperity into the equation because prosperity is what it, what comes out on the other end of the equation. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's what what comes out. And when I say prosperity, you feel good in your soul mm-hmm. when you're helping people, when you're serving people, when you're solving problems. You are gaining financially because the bigger the problems that you solve, the more people are going to be willing to pay you to solve those problems. And you are unlocking this satisfaction that cannot be gained, right, in just pursuing monetary prosperity, right? You, You are pursuing God's heart, which is to help people discover the gospel, which sets us free. In Mm -hmm. every way, in every aspect of our lives, everything that you do, your career, your family should be whittling down to God's purpose, which is to disciple, disciple the nations with the gospel of the kingdom. And it doesn't have to look like a religious setting, Mm -hmm. like you're a pastor standing behind a pulpit, but every single one of us has a part to play in this discipleship process. And, And it comes down to, again, finding the passions to pursue, the problems to solve, the people to serve, the place to do it, and and, and driving from assignment to assignment with those things in mind. Um, dipping yourself in God's presence every single morning before you even begin your day, knowing how important that is going to be for you to to not allow your passions to get off of whack, to be overwhelmed with problems that you may not even be called to solve and and be overwhelmed with this societal pressure to achieve certain statuses. And so, uh, w- you know, this is an important conversation that you need to jump in on. Go to my website, ryancoleempowerment.com and sign up now. Pre-sign up. The course is going to be released in the next couple of weeks, but you want to be the first to receive access to this this course curriculum, these videos, um, um, this material to help you unlock the purpose that God has placed inside of your life. Jeremiah 1.5, we know this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That word is an intimate word. That means he, he put something inside of you that that is going to be birthed in your lifetime before you were born i consecrated you i appointed you and for jeremiah it was to be a prophet to the nations but for you it it, it could mean a variety of things but he is the one who fulfills his purpose for you we're crying out in a lot of ways in this season but psalms 57 2 says i cry out to god the most high for it is he who fulfills his purpose for me. And that is even a change of mind. Even when it comes to your purpose, it's not you who's fulfilling it. You're participating in God fulfilling that purpose through you. It's uh, not by your own strength, but through not God. by your own mind, yep. but by the spirit of God. Amen. I love that. Well, any last words before we close out this episode of Needed Conversations? No, I think it was a great conversation about purpose and I'm excited to get into more of that as well yes well again make sure you sign up and subscribe if you're on youtube we love mondays around here because it's empowerment mondays you get a lot of content to help fuel your week i noticed um, a gap on monday sort of a radio silence especially in the christian world we get these sundays where you scroll on facebook and there's nothing but services mondays is radio silences but for a lot of people Mondays is when you really need it the most. That that because most people dread punch Mondays. Of empowerment. <laughs> but we love to empower you guys. So uh, we 
air a new episode every Monday. So be sure to stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe. That way you get a notification every time a new episode comes out. Yes. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.